Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. So in today's episode we're going to be doing a review of the Audi S3. Now this is where I have a confession to make. You see I have owned my Audi S3 since January of 2020 and in all that time I have never done a review of the car. You've got to be kidding me. I built the car, put it back on the road and I've never taken it out and done a review. So today, we're going to do just that. But before we start, I have a problem. And it's to do with the S3, but we're gonna come on to that at the end of this video. In the meantime, let's do a review on my S3, mine being the 8V uh, facelift. So that's the one just before this one that's just been released. So, but before we get into that, let's do a little bit of a history on the S3. Okay, so the Audi A3 was first introduced to the European market back in 1996. It was Audi's return to producing small cars after killing off the Audi, uh, the Audi 50. And if you know what that car looks, it was uh, pretty dismal. And that was back in 1978. So 1996, we got this brand new A3 that's been introduced to the market known as the 8L. And it was a success. It was a great little car. People uh, warmed to it and they bought them in the drove. So that's when Audi decided to introduce the sporting derivative. So in 1999, Audi launched the S3, which was the first generation of the S model. That was the S3 8L. Introduced in 1999, this sportier version of the Audi shared the platform with cars like the Audi TT, the Seat Leon, and was fitted initially with the 1.8 um, litre turbocharger engine, which delivered around 210 brake horsepower. It was a detuned version of the um, Audi TT engine, because that produced 225 but in this fixture in this car it was a, a, a great sample the facelift 8 8p was introduced in 2008 and of course this came along with uh, another derivative of the s3 still a 265 brake horsepower but this time it now had an automatic gearbox to go with the manual gearbox that had been uh, the only option that was available until now now of course something else happened in 2010 Oh yeah, that was the introduction of the RS3, the big brother of the Audi range. Yes, the RS3 was a 340 brake horsepower four wheel drive system. And what was the main difference between the S3 and the RS3? Because a lot of manufacturers, when they have a high performance version of their vehicle, get a little bit confused. For example, VW, you had the, the R, which is the current uh, top of the range vehicle. And the difference between that and the GTI and the Club Sports are the fact that it's the most powerful car with four wheel drive. So how would Audi differentiate their vehicle? Oh yes, they added an extra cylinder. Yes, the RS3 would come with a five cylinder engine and a unique sound that sounded just like this. So what's it like to own and drive an 8V facelift? Well, let me show you. Now, one of the reasons why this car has been on my channel for such a long time is because I just can't seem to let go of it. It is probably the best car that I've ever owned. It's the car that I've had the toughest time with, actually having to replace the engine on that, taking it apart and really getting deep into the pure mechanics of this vehicle you kind of grow a custom you grow to love a car as a result of that so looking at the engine bay so here we've got our two liter engine this is the ea treble eight series engine so it's a two liter engine and this is the generation three b uh, of that engine and the engine um, itself uh, they do various letter acronyms but this is the djha engine so that designation there are two engines with that designation this is the 310 brake horsepower engine so the most powerful engine they do in this derivative and of course this engine is the same as what's in the golf r it's exactly the same engine um, 
and so you get the same uh, amount of torque and the same configuration as well in fact when you look under the bonnet under the two the only difference is the engine cover here which is nicer in the Audi I think um, it's a rock solid bulletproof engine this one here we've got a K&N filter so we've got a better filtration than the uh, standard one but um, in terms of uh, its reliability it is absolutely rock solid and this is of course a replacement engine in this vehicle because the other one had uh, damaged um, hinges on the side here yeah I know that's off because I'm topping it up hence the reason why we got this off so um, yeah you couldn't get a better engine than what you got in this in fact this same engine is in the current version of of the Audi the A3 and in a, quite a few other models on the um, Volkswagen family range so that's how good an engine it is interior wise pretty straightforward standard Audi A3 uh, with the clocks are slightly operated to show the S3 designation of course we've got the classic DSG gearbox which is a seven speed gearbox which is a beautiful gearbox the way it runs and of course buckled together with these beautiful seats all leather this car even though it's four years old the leather on it has really held up pretty well and you still get that new car smell as you come in to the vehicle such is the quality of the interior on these cars and of course in the middle there you've got your MMI screen which pops up gives you all the information that you need uh, to uh, drive this car and enjoy the uh, position coming to the back of the car there are two distinct stylings on this vehicle. On the RS3 you have a two single pipe massive exhaust whereas on the S3 you have these twin pipes or four pipes in total with a central diffuser. I actually think the S3 looks nicer. Um, I don't know what it is, that twin pipe configuration just looks a slightly better than the RS3 though the RS3 does look more aggressive so that's the first difference the second difference we're going to come on to after we've done a test drive right okay so let's talk about driving the s3 and what's it been like this car is an absolute beast to drive it is amazing in every single way i think i had a sort of clinging of what this car would be like to drive but the actual real life ownership has been something else it really has it's impressed me in every single way the way that the motor performs being in a four cylinder as well it's uh, the torque and the power to weight ratio is just perfect um, so at the moment I'm gonna about to go into a dual carriageway and this is where this car comes on its own because the torque that it produces is absolutely satisfying and my wife drives this car more than I do and that's a good thing for me because every time I get back into the car it just feels really special and the one thing that I really do like about this car is that everything is very simplistically laid out there's nothing no airs and graces about the S3 it is the same as any of the other Audis in the range the A3 if you look at the dashboard other than the fact that it's got the S logo um, you could be driving an S line motor but the A3 has always been a well designed car and in the S3 format it just takes it to almost perfection and I say almost perfection because there are a few things that are niggly or I find niggly one of the things is this is not an RS3 with a five cylinder engine that will be the icing on the cake and that's why that's the next car on my list but focusing on this car in I'm driving in eco mode and to get into into S mode I just basically knock the gear stick down once and, and that's it and the, everything about the car changes from the gear changes tighten up the throttle response the valves in the in the exhaust open up and it's almost like you're driving a different car and you can concentrate on what you're doing because of the fact that the car with its all-wheel drive uh, performance means that this car is very predictable yes there is a little bit of oversteer when you go around corners when you're giving it some beans but you expect that from an all-wheel drive vehicle but it's completely predictable and you are in full control at all times now I say that I drive a car in eco mode there's 
no real benefit. You're not, you don't buy an S3 because you want to leave it on the car. If you did that, you will buy a diesel. You buy an S3 for the performance. And the other reason why I tend to drive the car around in eco mode because when I do need the power, then the car never disappoints. And that's the great thing about driving this car. And I think that's one of the things that I will miss. Now, this car does have a few performance upgrades. So it has, for instance, a K and a filter, which you can hear every now and again, particularly when you go into sports mode. Um, but that obviously improves the breathing. It also has a race chip. And I think the race chip has probably been one of the best investments on this car because that takes this car from a 310 brake horsepower, pretty brilliant car in its standard form to 376 brake horsepower. And that's something that we're gonna confirm next week and that's the reason why we're, I'm putting this video out today because next week we will be taking this car down to a Regal Autosports and we're actually gonna get the car on the rolling road on the dyno to see what it produces does the race ship deliver on its performance certainly from a driver's perspective it does because when i put the car in sports mode which is in now the car really does pull and it doesn't hesitate it pulls nicely there's no spluttering it's just a pure solid performer and that's why I love this car. Now even from the controls on the steering wheel, they are very easy and very workable. You, there are no dramas here, everything just works. And considering that VW and Audi pretty much change are uh, interchangeable when it comes to parts, the Audi part list or the Audi controls are different. They are much more user friendly on the on the Golf. Um, the hand controls are there's a lot of buttons, whereas on the Audi, the volume controls and there's a roller which is nice. The um, um, MMI controls to scroll through the screens. That's also uh, a roller button which is much better. Uh, I feel anyway um, in terms of getting information as and when you need it. And when you're driving a car like this with a performance, getting that information when you need it. Comfort factor, it's a very comfortable car. It's an A3, and Audi have spent a lot of time developing this car. And this car being the um, the facelift AV model, it doesn't um, it doesn't disappoint. It certainly does deliver a very comfortable ride. Now I've driven this car. Um, I'm taking it the length and breadth of the, of the country, and I've never gotten out of the driver's seat and felt very uncomfortable or tired. It's a pleasure to be behind. And for that reason is, and that's the reason why I want to keep with the brand and uh, continue having or getting RS3. Because even though on a power basis, this car is some 50, 60 brake horsepower less, the one thing that this car is missing is that sound of a five cylinder. Even with the pops and bangs, we now the car is popping. Um, not loud, not aggressively, it's discreet, uh, but you can hear it, it's subtle. Um, I would love to get the RS3, so that's what we're going to be doing next, getting an RS3 so that we can benefit from that. Uh, like I said, if it wasn't for that fat, this car would not go. I would keep this car for, an, for years because it is such a comfortable car to drive and it's sedate enough that it still does get the discreet looks people look over and you, you get that nod of approval and that's one of the things that I really like about this car so let's talk about the day when we have to sell this car well that's not going to be anytime soon when I say that I'm not talking about the next couple of weeks um, before this car goes up for sale I will need to have purchased the Porsche. I'm looking to pull to, to get a uh, Porsche um, uh, Cayman. If you haven't seen last week's video, that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. And um, and then once that's in place, then we'll be looking to to sell this car. So you, you're probably looking around sort of hopefully maybe around sort of May. 
around that point. Um, at least that's the plan. And then, oh, and then up from that point onwards, we'll be looking out for an RS3. Now, I have been looking at RS3s and seeing what they're going for, and um, they are still commanding strong money. But then, some of these cars, uh, S3s, have gone up in value. Um, of course, just being a salvage car, it's not going to achieve the same kind of volume. But um, the prices that they are commanding, I'm pleasantly surprised. So, so that's the plan for this car. So, around hopefully around sort of May time, we'll be in a position to um, uh, put this car for sale, and because we'll have the uh, the other car, the cable available. Of course, we've still got the garage to do as well. So. Next week, like I said, looking forward to getting this on the dyno and seeing what it produces. Will it live up to the race trip um, stated performance? That'd be interesting to see. Now, naturally, with anything like that, those are cars under optimum um, conditions. This won't be. This car is obviously being used, etc. But we're going to put. Um, some v um, Shell VMAX fuel in here, it's got a Caden filter, so it'll be interesting to see how close it is, or even if it goes over, that'll be interesting. So, all of that coming up in next week's episode. In the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy the drive, and uh, even though it's raining outside, um, this car is still a ple pleasure to drive in, in these conditions. Interesting, but still a pleasure. So there you go, that is the 8V, my 8V, and why I think it's such a great car. But of course, earlier on in this video, I spoke about having a problem. And here's a problem. You see, I don't drive that car a lot. My wife does. She drives it during the week and she loves that car. The power and everything that we spoke about in the video, she adores. To the point that she's calling it her car. And that's my problem, you see. Now, I have to get um, sell this car hopefully and replace it with an RS3 which would be the ultimate car for me and that's and the only way that's going to happen is for me to replace it with something else that's something else being the Golf GTE and that's the reason why I had that car remapped now hopefully that will be enough for my wife to release the keys for me so I can sell the car if not that's going to be around for a little while but in all seriousness, it is such a fantastic car. It is probably the best car that I have ever owned um, in terms of the frills that it delivers. It's such a well-sorted, well-perfect piece of machinery. And next week, we'll be putting it to the test. Next week, we are going to get it on a dyno, that's what I mentioned, and hopefully, we'll get the figures, or it'll be delivering the figures that we think it will do. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell notification so you're notified whenever we release a new video. If you enjoyed this video, comment below. If you didn't, comment below. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But anyway guys, we will see you on the next one next week on our way to Regal Auto Sports where we'll be getting that S3 on that dyno and finally getting those figures. We'll see you then.